Hello everyone, welcome to Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max, filming my colleague Ryan today. Hello. Hello. We're the Tesla Supercharger and we're here to talk about what the Tesla North American charging standard is. Not just what you plug into Teslas now, but apparently, Ryan, what you plug into uh, General Motors, Ford, Rivian, and future Volvo vehicles, and current ones with the use of an adapter that we're expecting in 2024. Absolutely, we've had some big news over the past few weeks and this is now a new actual standard. That's awesome, um, and we're gonna describe what it being a standard means, what you can expect, whether you're buying one of the cars you mentioned or not, and uh, do you wanna start charging, Ryan? Yeah, of course. All it takes is grabbing this, pressing the button, plugging in. All right, let's okay. talk next. Since Ryan and I filmed the video you're about to see, we heard an announcement that Electrify America is going to adopt NACS, the North American Charging Standard from Tesla at its stations beginning in 2025. Also, as of me filming this, Volkswagen Auto Group is confirmed that they're in talks with Tesla to adopt it, so it's looking likely for North America. I think the rest of our points in the video still stand. Uh, everything else stands, but I just wanted to include this to show you that we're aware of the news. Things are developing extremely rapidly and the standardization is here. But stay tuned for the rest of the video to hear what Ryan and I have to say about what that standardization process is gonna look like and what it means for you. All right, Ryan, so uh, we're in the air conditioning of your car. Thank goodness it's a very hot day. Uh, one of the benefits of any electric car, by the way, I think is just being able to idle with AC and you're not running an engine. Absolutely, one of my favorite things. Nice, and this could be your mobile office. You could be plugged in all day or not plugged in as well as you want. But we're talking about the Tesla NACS, North American Charging Standard. So Ryan, it's not just a Tesla thing anymore. Other automakers have announced their support for it. What is uh, What makes it a standard in North America? Absolutely. So they have already been calling the Tesla charging port the North American charging standard for a while. However, Tesla, until very recently, was the only manufacturer using this. However, the standard is technically open, so other manufacturers can create the port, and many charging uh, operators such as uh, ChargePoint, EVgo, Blink, many others have already announced that they will begin to support NACS as well. Furthermore, we've heard from several manufacturers, including GM, Ford, Rivian, and I'm sure more are coming along the way, that they will be switching to NACS and their current vehicles will be able to have access to Tesla superchargers using a adapter. It's exciting, yeah. As of today, Volvo's announced, which means I think Polestar is gonna come soon because that's owned there by the same company, Geely. Uh, we've seen other major manufacturers like Hyundai um, Motor Group, who owns obviously Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis, those brands considering uh, it and then we have uh, I think also Stellantis saying they're considering it. Stellantis, of course, owning Dodge, Chrysler, Fiat, a lot of major European and American brands. Um, so that's all very exciting. Uh, and then you said uh, you mentioned Blink, some charging companies. So to be a standard, I guess it's not just Tesla superchargers. Anyone theoretically, right, can now make these plugs, make chargers that plug into vehicles with this port. Absolutely, and I, th I think that's a very important point. This is opening it up, uh, opening up the entire charging infrastructure. So right now, if you have a CCS vehicle, you can't charge on any Tesla supercharger. However, if you have a Tesla, you do have a, an adapter so you could charge on CCS. With the introduction of the adapters that go uh, from Tesla to CCS, as well as other manufacturers moving to uh, the NACS Tesla port, we're going to see basically every vehicle being able to charge on every charger. And I think that's a great thing. And it's a really important thing for everyone to be able to charge everywhere. Sounds super exciting. Adapters both ways. There's a few wrinkles we need to mention, though. The first of which I think is kind of ironic is that early Tesla models, right? Like this Model 3, Model Y, Tesla Model S, essentially ones that weren't made in 2021 or I think 2020, uh, like any earlier, like a 2018 Tesla, is actually not going to work with a third party charger that uses the same plug, the NACS. That's right. Uh, somewhere down the line along Tesla's development, they changed some of their charging protocols so that they would be able to use the same, basically, communication uh, route that CCS uses, which means those older cars that you mentioned aren't able to charge on CCS with the adapter. They require some further uh, updates, which Tesla does offer, but 
standardly they're not able to just plug into CCS. So there are some hiccups there. Yeah, that's what I think is important for people to understand. Chargers are not like gas pumps. They're not dumb appliances. They have to be smart. They have to be connected. So you has to, you know, just because something fits and plugs in doesn't mean it's actually going to charge or charge well. Um, so the other, you know, wrinkle here I can think of is a lot of people are, you know, celebrating this news with the, you know, assumption that, oh, great, reliable charging for everyone in North America. Not necessarily the case here. Well, I think the big deal for automakers we've mentioned that have announced, right, Rivian, Volvo, General Motors, and Ford, is they get to use superchargers, presumably because they made some deal with Tesla. Maybe they're paying them, who knows? But they get to use Tesla superchargers, the most expansive, the most reliable, as we've seen, um, charging network in the US, right? Absolutely. Uh, I've been running Rate Your Charge for several months now. We've been aggregating thousands and thousands of, of photo and video check-ins of people using fast chargers. and. By far and away, Tesla has been the most reliable. However, that doesn't mean that it's going to be 100% perfect. For example, a lot of the eGMP vehicles, that's the Hyundai Ioniq 5, Ioniq 6, Kia EV6, those vehicles aren't actually able to charge on some of the Tesla superchargers that have the CCS adapter called Magic Dock in them. They're just are problems with the operability between the vehicle and the charger. Well, as I understand it, some of them, they, they can charge, but they have to basically use a inbuilt booster because their battery pack runs at a different voltage than those chargers are used to giving. Tesla has, you know, chosen to go, at least with their current hardware, it's lower voltage, they run higher amps to the cables. If you're not an electrical nerd, the point is the advertised peak charging speeds, the really fast charging that you see on vehicles like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 or the Lucid Air or the Porsche Taycan, dependent on what options you get. Um, you may not see the fastest charging on a lot of cars that don't, that, you know, work a little differently, um, which I think is really interesting, right? So. Uh, maybe this is something I'm guessing will be fixed with future Tesla superchargers to come? Yes, I, I think that's most likely where it's heading. There are some voltage limitations where Tesla superchargers aren't able to provide the precise number that some vehicles want to have to charge. That means they're either not able to charge at all or they charge at a much slower rate for whatever uh, solution that they've created. Yeah. So while they may be 150 or even 250 uh, kilowatt chargers uh, from Tesla, you may not see that on your Lucid. Yeah, so that applies to the Tesla supercharging network. However, the North American Charging Standard plug, theoretically, uh, in the you know specifications they open sourced or they kind of opened up, um, it's going to support that. It's going to support the vehicle 2x functionality, meaning you know uh, your vehicle battery, your high voltage battery in your car, powering appliances, powering your home potentially, the grid, uh, all kinds of things, basically bi-directional charging, charging from the car to other things. So that's cool. Yes, that's something that Tesla has talked about about for a long time. It's not yet uh, available, but uh, I th I'm hopeful that someday we'll see it. And because Tesla says it's possible, I, I believe it is. And I think other manufacturers would be able to do the same thing with the port. Yeah. And Ryan, I think, frankly, future Tesla vehicles to be competitive, they're going to want the you know vehicle to X functionality. They're going to want that bi-directional charging. Uh, like Cybertruck, maybe if it has you know some of the high voltage outlets the way the F-150 Lightning and the upcoming Silverado EV do, uh, 240 volt outlet would be great. So having some form of that on board, but also having it through the actual charge board, through NACS, um, like you see in the Five, which does that, that would be awesome. Uh, and then Tesla also being able to offer uh, the high voltage charging, which for big vehicles like Cybertruck is gonna be important, I think, for getting them charged really quickly. Um, because you want high amps, you want high voltage, it's gonna give you lots of power into those vehicles. Um, so we've talked to this point about Tesla's superchargers. As a standard, if other companies, Blink chargers, ABB, um, you know, some of these are uh, hardware makers. They just make the charging hardware. Some of these are charge point operators. They actually provide the service. Um, so Electrify America, you know, they don't make hardware, but they use other people's hardware and their stalls. They haven't made any announcements, but we can assume that third party charging networks are going to be able to use Tesla. My big thing here that I want to get across is I feel like people think this means these networks will fix all their issues. I don't think it does. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree with that. Changing to the NACS standard is exactly that. You're just changing the end of the port. I think there are pretty marginal differences as far as reliability when it comes to just the actual physical connector. 
The biggest thing I would say is the CCS we use in the States here in the US is um, the lock is in the cable, meaning that like if you ever had the awkward experience, Ryan, I know you know you have drove a bolt, I drove a pulse start too, where I like plug in my car and there's this awkward um, moment of oh, do I know if it clicked in? I mean, usually as EV nerds, we know to expect that click and look out for, but basically the mechanism that locks the charging cable to your car, right, for yeah. security uh, and, and for uh, safety, that mechanism is in the actual cable, the handle, which means that typically from what we've seen, and I know what you've seen at Rate Your Charge, is those handles are inherently less reliable than um, even what Europe uses with their version of CCS or what Tesla does with the North American charging standard, where your vehicle port actually is a thing that locks it. it, it it's a small design thing, but that does seem to add to reliability, uh, but to your point, it's not just that. That's only one of many, you know, things that can go wrong in public charging. There's also bad software layers, all kinds of things. The experience, Ryan, that you're used to as a Tesla driver, pulling up to a supercharger, having real-time status, just plugging in the vehicle, communicating back to it, recognizing who you are, billing your Tesla account. That to me seems like a proprietary Tesla thing. Still, I imagine when you plug into EVgo, Electrify America, whomever may have an ACS in the future you're gonna have to activate however they want you to activate, which may require an app, other clunky methods, or like we've seen card readers that don't work. Yeah, and, and to that point, I think it's going to be the same way when other manufacturers are charging on the Tesla supercharger network. For example, if uh, say a Rivian is pulling up to a, a Tesla charger, they're going to have, to have to open up the Tesla app and activate it that way. I don't think it will necessarily have the same sort of just plug and go that Tesla has. That might just be something exclusive to Tesla. I do wonder though, Ryan, and we don't have confirmation, you know, your guess is as good as mine here, but a big deal that Ford made, for instance, when it launched the Mustang Mach-E and the F-150 Lightning was Ford Pass and the ability to actually do what we call plug and charge as a standard. Um, that actually is a standard uh, that has seen mixed adoption, but theoretically exists to be able to plug in an electric car and have it do the Tesla thing, but in a non-Tesla proprietary way. Um, so if Tesla opens up, the, right, the, all the superchargers speak the CCS language, whatever, they plug in with an adapter or without an adapter to other cars, maybe we could see that experience if Tesla says, oh, in, ad in addition to uh, what we're already doing, we're also gonna do plug and charge. Basically, will Tesla kind of go with the open standard um, in this respect, like with the protocol, do you think? It's definitely possible. I, I don't know if they'll actually end up doing it. I think there might be some challenges with interoperability dealing with all the different manufacturers, all the different vehicles. It might be challenging, but I could be totally wrong. Uh, I mean, Electrify America has been able to, with some success, uh, implement tr plug and charge on various different uh, manufacturers and vehicles, but... yeah. If I'm, to see. yeah, my perspective is if I'm Ford, if I'm GM, I'm making this deal with Tesla, I don't want the supercharger to be a worse experience for customers. So the two things we've talked about, right? Like if your vehicle's higher voltage, this isn't a problem currently for Ford or Volvo or those, you know, making 400 volt cars, which has been pretty normal until now. Um, you know, and we presume future superchargers will fix that problem. But I think this user experience question, expecting your customers to open the Tesla app, if I'm Jim Farley or if, uh, I'm whoever at these companies making that deal, I would probably want that experience. So I'm sure Tesla and these other automakers are gonna figure out ways of doing that. That's my take here though, um, because we do have the standard plug and charge that we've seen, you know, its execution has been mixed, but I think the potential for that is high. And the reason I say that, Ryan, is because I see so many people, whether it's at, you know, um, just any charging uh, network, they, they're there and they're figuring out, oh, how do I see the number on the charger so I know which one to activate in the app? I mean, it's just such a clunky process, whether it's Tesla or anyone else. We've seen it already with the existing like 11, 12 Tesla superchargers that have the adapter built in mm -hmm. to charge non-Tesla cars. You have to do it through the app, like you mentioned, that method. I ho I'm hoping, personally, that's not the method that we see going into the future. Absolutely. It would be way nicer to be able to just plug in anywhere and it immediately starts charging. Yep. And then, uh, Ryan, we've heard all these announcements. I think the other exciting announcement today is of, of filming this, aside from Volvo announcing, is the Society of Automotive Engineers, SAE, announcing their support of the Tesla North American Charging Standard. That's super cool. Uh, can you briefly explain for everyone watching what uh, SAE is and why that's a big deal? Yeah, uh, SAE is, in layman's term, an organization 
that is very critical to creating standards and basically setting setting the rules for automobiles and the entire industry. Yeah. With this announcement from them, that at least to me feels like it's really solidifying that NACS is truly going to become a standard. It's something that is coming to the U.S. and we will see a massive shift from CCS to NACS. And hopefully CCS will continue to be supported, but it seems like NACS will be the port of the future in America. The port physical, uh, yeah, of the future. Um, the you know optimistic vision you present at the beginning here is what I'm excited about, the fact that every vehicle is hopefully going to be able to charge everywhere because the CCS adapter is going to exist and currently only the partnered vehicles will be able to charge at Tesla superchargers for GM, Volvo, Rivian uh, as of us filming this. But nonetheless, the technology is there, I think, for any CCS car to be able soon to charge at Tesla superchargers. And then we've already seen Tesla cars uh, that are newer can charge at CCS stations. Um, so every car is going to speak ccs in that respect i think ccs won here uh the open standard um it's just going to be over a different plug and and, and i think a almost anyone would be hard pressed to argue that a tesla plug isn't better more convenient easier for users yeah it's a good plug and one thing i also do want to mention is uh with this I i'd also like to say that a charging monopoly isn't a good thing so no. tesla of course is the most reliable they've got a great network but other, other uh, charge point operators exist, and they're going to start creating NACS, and hopefully they'll be able to compete with Tesla, improve the charging experience, bring down prices, just improve the overall experience for the users and customers. Yeah, now with the Society of Automotive Engineers, if that name implies anything, right? Like that's, you know, a, a big body, a standards group, also Charin evaluating the Tesla North American Charging Standard af after previously dismissing it. Uh, now they're finally taking it seriously because they kind of have to. Um, that's good, I think, because like you said, it means that we're gonna be protected from a monopoly. Um, effectively, Tesla superchargers are still the best, I think, deservedly. I mean, they're just the best charging network work. I don't want at the vehicle end or the charging end, though, Tesla to have complete control of the situation, and they won't. Um, so that's great because, I mean, it, whether you're a Tesla fan or you're not, I think if you want this to be taken seriously as a standard, you know, it needs to be open in the sense that uh, there's a consortium, there's different people, there's a bureaucracy around it that has its downsides, of course. It means changes are going to be slow. Uh, you know, things will take a while to get standardized. But the good news of that is that um, everyone can feel comfortable adopting this and not feeling like they're going to be dependent on Tesla. Yes, overall, I think it's it's a great shift for our market and just the industry in general. I think I think overall, it's it's good. I, Everyone being able to charge, charge everywhere is is the solution that we would want to see. Yes, everyone being able to charge everywhere does again doesn't fix charging issues, doesn't fix vehicles with very slow charging or you know like Toyota BZ4X whatever or bad software at charging point operators issues we've all seen. I think unfortunately those are going to linger, but I think this is a huge step towards um, usability, and I hope the you know improved connector Ryan. Uh, is almost is the catalyst that sparks everyone in the charging industry um, getting their act together. Absolutely. Now, now that uh, other vehicles will have access to the Tesla supercharger network, I think it really lights a fire under other charge point operators. They have to improve. They have to be able to compete and offer a similar experience if they want to continue being a company and offering offering those services. Absolutely agree. It's a high benchmark to set, but I'm glad it's been set uh, and it really is the new standard. If it, it was like a meme before when Tesla said North American charging standard, but then we saw Ford announce, then we saw GM, then Rivian, now Volvo, and I'm sure more dominoes will fall, but it seems like um, you know the momentum's clearly there. I'm happy. Of course, it's just the North American charging standard, right? CCS2 the different connector exists in Europe. I believe China uses GPT, which is like a different version of the Chadmo protocol, or maybe that's Japan. I don't know. There's different protocols and different connectors around the world. But Ryan, I don't think that's a huge issue because you know people aren't driving their cars across continents that often. Typically, no, I'm I'm not planning on driving my car <laughs> to China right now. Yeah, that would make a great video. But um, if, if you were to do that, Ryan, it seems like we need some fancier adapters. But it's fine, because in North America, things are getting figured out, and I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see how everything plays out and how it, how it improves. Awesome. Well, see you all in the next one.